Here we go. Welcome back to another weekly edition of the Exponential Files, the place where you can learn how to get off the hamster wheel of real estate and figure out how to build several additional streams of income that will help you. I'm Larry Lawfer, and your host each week is Jim Lowenstern, the CEO of Castles Unlimited Team, brokered by EXB Realty. Today's show will be a good one. You're in for a treat. Jim will read from his new book, Your Million Dollar Month, later in the show. But first, let's start with a timely story about mothers. Mother's Day is not one of those hallmark holidays like Valentine's Day. The Mother's Day we celebrate now on the second Sunday in May is fairly recent, but the basic celebration goes back to ancient mythology. The Greeks paid homage to Cybele, the mother figure of their gods, and the Romans also dedicated their annual spring festival to the mother of their gods. In the 16th century England, a celebration called Mothering Sunday was inaugurated. A Sunday was set aside for the visiting of your mother. The eldest son or daughter would bring a mothering cake. I have to find out what's in that. Um, uh, Probably rum, something like that. The cake was shared with the family, The children would assume all household chores and the duties of preparing the meals and the special dinner in her honor. In 1905 was really the beginning here in the United States. Miss Anna Jarvis wished to memorialize her mother after she passed. She started a campaign to make it a national day to honor all mothers. Her mother was known as Mother Jarvis and was a housemaker and lifelong activist who had organized mother's work days to save the lives of those dying from the polluted waters around their West Virginia home. During the Civil War, Mother Jarvis organized women's brigades, encouraging women to help those who were wounded without regard for which side the men had chosen. On May 10th, a Mother's Day service was held at a church in Grafton, West Virginia, where Mother Anna's mother had taught. This was the birth of our current Mother's Day celebration. In 1914, President Ro- uh, Woodrow Wilson signed a bill designating the second Monday in May as the legal holiday that we now call Mother's Day. As a professional working in real estate every day, I'm going to share my personal opinion and observation that mothers will always be the strongest voice of the homes that the families buy. I know thousands of agents, and I have always found that working mothers are often the best agents. They are able to multitask the myriad of duties all agents must contend with on a daily basis. So let's take this moment to celebrate both moms and women for all they do for us each and every day. What do you think, Jim? Um, yeah. There you go. There I you go. A, there I you go. A, I had a good <clears throat> mother and my, my wife is a good mother. That introduction was very Almond Brothers-esque. <laughs> and, the name, and the name of the book is The Million Dollar Month in Real Estate. Your Not million dollar... Your million not to be confused month. with your million dollar month. I, I did not write that book. It is on Amazon, even though Amazon drives me crazy. So my first book, I'm looking at it on Amazon. I sell it for $11.95. Okay. You go to Amazon, it says 25 bucks. And in a tiny little print, it says, but you can buy it for $11.95 or more, something like that. And I write that and say, hey, I'm the author. Hey, I'm the publisher. Hey, I'm the distributor. If I'm selling it at $11.95, why do you have it there for $25? So they write me back. Of course, you can't speak to anyone at Amazon. None of these companies, they're never going to take a phone call. Uh, and actually, they did call me this, this, this week, and I could never call them back. That's another story. Uh, They said, oh, that's a special account that you have to have to get that featured price. 
and you can apply for that account and pay for it, but there's no guarantee that you're going to be chosen as the featured price on your product. How does any of that make sense? Craziness, huh? Uh, just like uh, once, once upon a time, facebook.com slash luxury real estate took you to my Facebook page. Little known fact, I was luxury real estate on Facebook. I was in the personification of luxury real estate. And luxury real estate magazine called me and said, hey, uh, give us your, um, your name on Facebook. Okay. And I'm like, what are you smoking? I mean, no. So they called Facebook and Facebook then ripped the name away from me. And I put it back on my account. And then I get a big block on my Facebook. If you do this again, you're going to be banned from Facebook for life. I did get to speak to someone at Facebook. You know what they told me? What? Pound sand. Basically in those simple terms, pound sand. Um, so I am now, if you go to facebook.com slash I am Mr. Luxury Real Estate. Mr. Luxury. Which, 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 which is more appropriate, probably. See, I made the mistake. I had luxury real estate on a non-business page. I had it on my ah, personal page. Ah, ah. So they twisted it on me yeah. and said, aha, luxury yeah. real estate. That's yeah. a business name. That's the name of that magazine. And But if I had the business page, whatever. So I'm, I'm getting way off off the track here. Uh, <laughs> it, it's like those two guys in, uh, what, what is that, Sesame Street? Those two old guys that sit up in the balcony, the two really old guys are all they do is bitch. Let's not make that analogy. We don't, <laughs> we don't want to be that. <laughs> They're funny though. They really yeah, they are. are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is, this is a, a, actually what we should do is, is go back to last week. That, that was a first. We had um, one of our agents, um, probably should have had one of our agents that actually has a website already. Uh, so we could show the links off of this website to hers, but, uh, that was good. Uh, am I turning red? My, my lighting is off. Uh, but that being said, uh, we should have let her know ahead of time that this is really our show and she's a guest. It's not going to be our show interviewing her. That's not what that show is going to be about. It's always going to be our show, right? Talking about EXP topics, basically. E the Exponential yeah, but, Finance uh, is about EXP and um, the journey. The objective is to help other agents understand the values of EXP. And that not being the highlight. Said, and that being said, I was listening to the uh, CNBC today, the uh, financial uh, channel. Uh, <clears throat> such such an epiphany I had because they were talking about uh, Starbucks and some of these other companies that are starting to get some unionization going against them. I don't know if it's Amazon or, you know, whoever it is and how it might affect their uh, profitability in the future and their stock price and stuff like that. And I started thinking in terms of EXP and unionization and how it sort of is a unionization of agents against the franchise establishment. I get it. And, I get what and, you're saying. And I'm extrapolating a little bit. I was on yeah. uh, one of our uh, Game Changer Mastermind meetings yesterday. <clears throat> and uh, I think it might have been AJ uh, who, who brought it up. A AJ is one of these million dollars. AJ Mida. AJ Mida. So, and he was talking about how great it was that, you know, Glenn Sanford came up with this idea of instead of the agents paying a royalty fee, a franchise fee to the brand, the company, the brand is more of a platform for the agents to actually get 
a franchise fee or royalty because they are the company, not right. the other way around. Right, right, right. So, and that, and, and say, that's why yeah. that's why that is why the agents are willing to help each other because helping anybody helps the company and that helps you individually. That's the concept. Yeah. So, and I was just thinking, it it really is a bit of a. Um, I mean, using the word revolution is just too easy uh, a title to throw on it, but it really is a sort of a revolt of the hardworking agents against the status quo in a bit. Um, can you can you put up that chart of transactions? Can you can you put that up? Because this sort of is um, shining a bright spotlight. Is that the one? Yeah. yeah. So I get this yesterday in my um, workplace group. Top 100 brokerages, um, top 100 uh, brokerages listed in the 2022 top brokerages by transaction sides, da 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 da. Um, as of December 31st. Um, so maybe that was. The whole year. I say I thought it was the first quarter of this year, but it really doesn't matter. The point is, these are current statistics. Putting EXP at a number one spot of all brokerages, they did in 2021 444,367 total transactions. The next group was home services, which in itself, it is not a tech platform. It is not a business model. It's a conglomeration of, uh, I, I don't know how many brands, but that's Warren Buffett's group. Uh, and maybe there is a sign out there that says house for sale, home services of America. I doubt it. I think it's more like Edina Realty and EB Holiday better, and stuff like better, that. Better homes and gardens. Nope. Better Homes and Gardens is the next one. Realogy. Uh, okay. Better Homes and Gardens is part of Realogy, which is also a group mainly Caldwell Banker, but their transaction count. I mean, there's a sizable difference. Uh, also, we're talking um, 70,000 70, transaction difference. And then Compass is 225,000. That's more than 200,000 fewer transactions. And uh, Howard Hanna, that's, you know, it's still a big company. They're in the top five and they're only 125,000. So EXP, I mean, forget about the transaction sides for a moment. Just think about what this means. This is a company that didn't even exist 10 years ago, other than Compass. All these other companies have been around for decades or maybe a hundred years at this point. And EXP came out of nowhere and they're leading the amount of transactions. It's just, it's just incredible. In and and I, I think we, uh, okay. So we need to step, step away from that and understand uh, why that's important to the people that are listening and, and what, what they get out of it. Because the, your, your agency or your franchise or you know, the company that you work with, um, them making a lot of money doesn't mean you're making a lot of money. And the beauty of EXP versus any of these other platforms is you can buy and sell real estate as, a, as a, an agent and make your money. This is the only one that offers you other ways to make money besides that. Um, I'm surprised Keller Williams isn't on this list somewhere. They should be. Okay. Uh, uh, it, it, okay. So it's also, as this is counted, this is a singular brokerage uh, account perhaps. Okay. So in other words, there's one broker corporation. So Keller Williams, um, and, and this is complete honesty here. You know, there's probably a different metric, a different yeah. chart yeah. that would have yeah. KW at or near the top. Yeah. And that yeah. might be under, uh, and Remax for, and way for and franchise for franchise companies. So, yeah. you know, we're not showing you every single chart that there is, but this one's it, it, it is interesting. I mean, when you compare a company 
because you know we're in an area where you know top agents are at Compass. Of course, we're getting top agents from Compass coming to EXP because they go, oh, you mean so I do the same thing and I get an extra hundred thousand a year, or I do the same thing and I can also grow a team and somebody else does all the heavy lifting and I get paid for it, even if I stop working, that's something that the other companies don't have. And so I guess that's why, you know, call this a revolt or a revolution or whatever it is, it's happening. Word is getting out. So what's up with this one? Uh, We went over a thousand agents in Massachusetts. Oh yeah, put put up the next chart, sure. It's up there. Oh, I don't see it. Oh, you don't? Here, new, new share, okay. There we go. I'm seeing it, but now you can see it. Uh, now I see it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's just do all the news right now, and then I'll read. Uh, yeah, uh, two days ago, this popped up uh, in Massachusetts. So um, yeah, for a long time, uh, people would say EXP. What's that? And they probably still say it, but that's the good thing. Because even though a thousand agents sounds like a lot of agents, there are a lot of agents in Massachusetts that are not yet EXP agents. And what that means is that for the agents that are EXP agents, as they're introducing the business model and the company and the technology and all the things that it it brings to the table, um, they will reap the benefits. So the agents that are those thousand agents are in a good spot. Uh, so there's uh, I mean, some other information that's important too. That uh, uh, Chile and what was the other country that just opened okay, up? In, three, three new countries this week, uh, Dubai, mm-hmm. uh, UAE, uh, Ch- Chile, and uh, New Zealand. Yeah, so that's all the, four. All this week. Yeah, yeah. So that all, all of that is good. It means it's, the, the word is getting out of there. I think it's um, 24 countries now. Right. It, it must okay. be 25 countries by, by my count, but I don't know, because it was 22 countries when Greece and the Dominican Republic were added, and these are three more. This, so is, sig- all- this is significant for anyone who's in any kind of metropolitan area where, where you run into other people international or you have friends that are in another country, or you're here. Uh, from another country. That's wh- that's where this statistic becomes important. Let's go to the next share, which is a, what is it? It's a, a revenue share item, right? So oh. this. Oh, okay. That? Okay, just leave that up um, on, oh, it doesn't, it doesn't show, did you get the whole thing there? Because it should show the amount on there also. Nope. Oh. It doesn't is, show it. No. So this is okay. what was sent. Okay. That, that's fine. Uh, the last revenue share paid box that I have in the book that goes along with that uh, shows $43,977.49. So let me let me read this chapter. It's really short. Okay. Um, and sure. uh, then we'll go back to that uh, that page. Uh, So chapter 16 in my book is uh, titled Opportunity Cost. Life throws at us many opportunities. Of course, we can't appreciate, understand, make time for, or even fund all of them. I'd suggest you take advantage of the obvious opportunities that come your way, such as fairly priced real estate and healthy rental markets. When those properties come your way and you don't need to have a bidding war to acquire them, I suggest that you buy them, especially the properties with value adds. That means any property that you could do some painting, landscaping, or even total teardowns and redevelopments that you know will be worth much more than the investment. Then I'd suggest that you rent them, borrow against them and invest the borrowed money into the next project and so on. When it comes to your brokerage business in real estate, I would look at the opportunities carefully. A 90% commission might sound great, but if you are a producing superstar agent, then that 90% commission isn't the best thing that you can be doing for your career. If there's no cap, no residual income that can be earned, and no office, 
no administrative help, no coaching, no equity, et cetera, then you are getting a very underwhelming offer from probably a very small, desperate firm. The old adage that you get what you pay for might apply. When I moved my company onto the EXP platform, I had several of my agents talk about the monthly fee of $85 as if it were serious money. All of a sudden, these agents that I carried for years were telling me that the $85 expense made no sense to their business because they were part-time and wouldn't be using the CRM, et cetera. Okay, I thought. The $85 is much more than a CRM and a website. It is a worldwide Regis membership, SkySlope, DigiSign, Success Magazine, and most importantly, the opportunity to grow a huge business that will fund your retirement and possibly your children's futures for $85 a month. If it's looked at that way, $85 a month is quite a deal. What else is this opportunity that is offered to you? That residual income grid that goes to seven levels is possibly the best little thing you ever walked into in your lifetime and beyond. The opportunity to plug agents into what you will eventually call your downline or team. It's also a system that will handle all the paperwork, accounting, check cutting, compliance, licensing, and I'll have to change this. Uh, it says in 22 countries at this moment. I, I think I'm. I think I'm just going to put 100 countries because by the time this book hits the, the person's hand, it'll be more. Insurance, et cetera, all for $85 a month. I have met many agents with EXP that are earning from $300,000 a year to far over a million dollars a year. And that $85 seems like a pretty good deal to me. They don't need to work at all and they get paid that money. Yes, $85 a month was a business loss or write off in the beginning, but now it's just an opportunity cost. All my agents that walked away because of $85 didn't see the value apparently. I did my best to explain it to them, but they didn't see the potential. I know that it can be difficult to understand until you see actual people benefiting from it. So that's why I extend my knowledge and my vision to so many agents. It isn't about my success, it's about theirs. That's what makes the system work so well. It's about agents who want to see their friends be as successful as they are. So when you have an opportunity, and even if it has a small cost associated with it, try to look past the dollar amount, which in this case was $85 a month, and try to see what the opportunity is. I argue that if it were $200 a month, and if you had the possibility to earn $1 million a month on that platform, and there are people that are earning it, then the $200 a month is a reasonable amount to pay to be part of that system. Remember to look and understand the opportunity and not just focus on the cost. So that's where you can bring up that chart again. And that chart says a lot when you drill into it. Um, uh, so I want to say that about that $85 cost, we, we've said it before. Um, I replaced my CRM and all these other various services that I was paying over $500 a month for um, my video stuff, my email stuff, all of that. And it became 85. So I didn't spend 85. I saved 420. But Larry, you are unique. You actually invest in yourself. There are many agents that don't. Yeah. It's whatever drops in their lap, they work another, they, you know, they may work another job, whatever it is. Yeah, they can't imagine. Okay, so let's, let's look at this for one moment here. This is always confusing to people. And I'm sure people are clicking out right now. Um, no, uh, no, 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 they're not clicking out because this is this is so important. Uh, this individual is in our in our group. Uh, he's only been with the company for about 16 months. Yeah, he, he's, he's, he's a star. A uh, hundred, uh, what was it? 1,226 agents. He's probably well over 1,500 now, a few months later. And it breaks down the number. I mean, he's already got agents out to the seventh level. Uh, and and he, he is a professor of the XP. He, 
he actually puts the time in to help his agents, his downline, learn how to. Uh, this is Lars, help. right? Is this Lars? This, this is John. This okay, is John. John. Yeah. So, so I mean, thirty-one percent is coming from level four, and remember, forty-three thousand nine hundred seventy-seven dollars and forty-nine cents is the amount. I don't know if we can see it. Yeah, it's there. It's there. Yeah, there it is. Yeah. So what is that per year? That's over a half a million dollars per year. And he, and he told me this. He said, um, Jim, if I stop working tomorrow, next month, I will earn more money than I did this month. He said this system at a certain point creates its own momentum, a life of its own. So- Quite, and, quite and, and the point to make here is the difference between revenue share and profit share. Revenue share is top line. It's 50% of everything that comes to eXp goes out to the agents, proving that that's how they, they own it. And that's why uh, you help each other because it helps everyone. It's not profit share. Profit share can be figured out by who's ever sharing that profit with you. And if they don't feel as though they have been profitable in that period of time, then you don't get any profit. Uh, so it's just a little, it's very different. Um, that's a little shady to me. It always seems the, the profit share model. So, so what, so in, in your perspective, the $85 is like the, the best, investment in real estate. Well, it, it certainly saved me 420 something dollars a month. I'm happy with that. That's good for business. The biggest problem is, is not the monthly cost. It's the agents that don't take the time to learn what the opportunity is that they're buying into. And, 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 and for me, that's where I've got to start spending more time with my agents and explaining it to them. I got to get the, the book into their hand. I have to read the book to them if, if I need to. Um, yeah. We're going to have a sales meeting Tuesday and I'm going to start talking about this stuff because this um, this John, and, and we can't really talk about it because we're not even supposed to show this stuff. Take it off the screen. Not, not even supposed to talk about this stuff. <laughs> Uh, you know, and, and it's interesting. They they don't Jesus. They they don't want to be known as that company. You know, better agents are joining. You know, this is almost like you, you kind of almost want it to be like a, a like a secret. You know, it's you know, it's not a, a secret club or a secret group. It's hard to say. It. You're trying to keep it a secret when you're on a, a weekly show talking about it. I'm just saying, you know, yeah. it's, it's a humble company. I mean, look at the technology they have, yet they're not going around bragging about anything. They made a billion dollars. Why don't you put that up on the screen? All, all these fiscal <laughs> numbers. I mean, we'll brag about it. I mean, they they talk about it, but it's not like they're running, you know, commercials right there. I guess that's 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 what we're supposed to do. We're we're, we're the ones that uh, create the buzz. We are the dates, you know, and, and in that uh, advertising, public relations and promotion, we are. Do you, do you, you have know. that screen? I, I, I sent uh, you the, the billion. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't know if that was able to get up on there. Is that it? No, that's the same thing. Nope, that one didn't make it. No. Any other ones make it? That's Well, you sent me in the last hour before the show. That's the last time I'll do that. There's a lot that's going on. Um, so, uh, you want something up, send it to I me. I was showering morning. and driving at the same time. It's not easy to do. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, being more ready is easier to do. Think about it. Hey, Think I got up at Friday six o'clock today to do so much. And I bought yeah. a new car today. Good for you. I Good know. for you. End of In the this lease. marketplace lease. where there are no new cars, I bought a new car. You know what my new car is? My I new know. car is my old car because there's no new cars. Ah. I had, I literally had a buy. I mean, I've been leasing cars now one after another for, I don't know, it goes back probably 20 years at this point, maybe more. 
And um, yeah, uh, when I did the numbers, I would have literally to get a new car, if I was lucky, I would have been paying twice as much for the lease as I was paying the last time. And I'm not driving a whole lot. So I just said, what, what the heck? What's the buyout? Yeah. The buyout was less than the value of the car. I have very low mileage and That's I good. extended the warranty four years. So That's good. So it's nice and clean. And I paid uh, about, and I'm paying about the same as I paid before, but now I own it. There you go. It's a crazy world. It is an absolutely crazy world. Um, the uh, interest rates are going up. Uh, inventory is slowly trickling up too. Days on market is going up. All this means is good for the buyers. Uh, it's good news. It's good for the yeah. agents too. Yeah. Because they, be a, think of all the agents that are running around unable to ever sell a house to their buyers that are offering right. full price, 50,000 right. over the asking, well, whatever. Right. They don't care. Tell right. us. Right. Right. Uh, it, it has been an historically bizarre market for a year and a half. It's coming back to normal. Uh, it's not normal uh, by any stretch. Um, I don't think the, the, what we used to call normal, six months of inventory, you think we're going to see that in the next couple of years? I don't think so. If the Fed keeps pushing on the interest rates, uh, we will have a recession and there will be plenty of inventory. Mark my words. Uh, they, they're predicting, uh, what, another one and a half percent increase in the next nine months. That's yeah. enough. I mean, we're I, already in the fours for mortgages. I mean, I saw maybe close to five yeah. and it was under 3% in January. That's yeah. a huge increase. It absolutely is. And the basis points it's been going up has been quick to, to control the economy. And that's why I was talking about what corporations are doing with their profits. They're, they're hoarding the uh, stuff. So it's not helping our economy whatsoever. If they paid, they're people, buying back stock shares that are depressed. That's what they're yeah. doing. Yeah. EXP, by the way, this week announced they were doing a stock buyback. Right. Which is, which is what they need to do because, you know, all the real estate stocks have been hammered with the, inf you know, the interest rates going up. Right. Um, right. As, as a, a wise man once says, as stocks go down, they get cheaper. <laughs> I was Yogi Bear, right? <laughs> no, it was actually Jim Cramer. Okay. Or maybe yeah. it was Jim Cramer talking about somebody else. I think he was yeah. talking about somebody else. Yeah. Well, so you've wasted it. Charlie a, a, or Warren. One of you've guys. wasted another good half hour listening to us talk about two old guys talking about real estate. Thank you so much. Uh, if you have any questions, you can find us at the Exponential Files. Uh, and uh, we look forward to, look forward to talking Exponential to you. com. We'll talk to you next week. See you later. From Massachusetts. Very Allman Brothers. I like it. <laughs> <laughs>